Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. In the previous episode, I took these stores apart until there was nothing left inside them and I started cleaning them. They are now sparkling clean and I'm also treating the rust that I found on top of these doors. I'll show you some more of that later. If you've missed that episode, I'll put a link for you up above to catch up. But in this episode, I want to start building these doors back up again. And the way I want to do this is I'm first going to get the lock mechanism in on both sides. I'm going to replace these rubbers with new ones that I bought so that the door seals nicely against the body. Once I have this aligned perfectly, I'll take the next step. And the next step is to get the glass in, to get the window regulator in and get this all adjusted so that it sits nice and flush against this A-pillar and that it sits nice and flush against all of this rubber on the cabrio top. Once that is done, it is time for us to start testing electricals because then everything has been rebuilt, everything has been set up so we can start testing whether the windows go up and down, we can start testing whether I can get this cabrio top to go up and down and we'll also start testing all of this stuff on the dash. And once that is done, we can move on to mechanicals. So that's what's in store for you in this episode. We'll hopefully get to a point where we have working doors again, fully adjusted. I will not be doing the interior trim on the doors yet because I want to make sure that all the, all the electricals work, all the stuff is aligned before I put those on. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. I'm going to start by reassembling the driver's side door and for this door lock mechanism to work you need three components basically you need the outer door handle you need this outer latch mechanism and on the inside here you have a complex mechanism that has to go in and then the last piece of the puzzle is the internal door handle that sits there um, this one's going to wait for a while, but I've got the other parts here. All of them have been cleaned. All of them are now ready to go back in. So this is the outer latch. This is the inner mechanism. And this is the outer door handle. And I've already got the new gaskets installed or installed on there. And as I said in the previous video, two new bolts. I've got two new for that side as well. Um, so all three of these things will have to work in unison and go into this car. And once that is done, we can take the next step. Just before we continue on the door, I just wanted to show you this side as well. I've obviously also cleaned all of this and you can see I've removed the hardware. I've removed this little plastic block that sits right there. And I also removed the door catch and this has been cleaned already. And basically the door catch sits like this in the car. This will be fairly familiar to you guys and it goes with three bolts. These two guys and this one that goes through there. And the lock mechanism catches on this bolt. But as you can see, this bolt here, it should have a plastic cover here that has disappeared. It's gone. It's disintegrated. This is the biggest cause of door chatter on any car, is that this piece of plastic is gone. Luckily, Porsche still styled this new, and I've bought a new one. It just came in today, so I'm really happy so I can continue my work. This will go in through there, and that should eliminate any wiggle room that we have on the latch mechanism here. So let's quickly get this assembled, and then we can get back to the door. All right, so this is now nicely snugged up. There's some adjustment in this door catch. This is how you set the depth of the door inside the body once it is shut. So it can move backwards and forwards and a little bit up and down. For now, I've just tightened it up. We'll get back to this once we have the latches and so forth attached to the door. All right, so now I've got the outer latch and the inner mechanism connected to one another. And I just want to check whether the door will actually close and I can easily test it with a screwdriver. And that is now in its closed position. This is where that plastic covered screw would sit. And if I pull on the internal cable, it should pop open. And it does. Right, so this step is done. Now we can start putting on the outer door handle. All right, so we just have to feed this power cable through the hole like that and then get this guy through there as well and the little plastic piece 
and then we should be able to get it in the spot like that. There we go. So now that the door handle is attached to the door, the next step for us to do is connect the internals together so that it all works as one unit. Okay, that's on. There we go. All right, so let's see if that works. In the lock mechanism, outside door handle. So we now have the wiring harness mostly back in its spot. I've got this lock mechanism in and I also installed a new rubber on the door. All of this stuff is needed for me to test the locking uh, and the alignment of the door. But that'll also bring me to the problem that I'm going to experience. And that is that this does not line up at the moment at all. Um, and before I start aligning, I need to drop this car off the jack because it's a cabrio and a cabrio tends to open up like this when it's on a lift and I need it to be straight. So it needs to be on the floor for me to adjust this door. But before I do that, I need to copy what I've done here over there. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so now this door is done as well. The lock mechanism, the latch, everything is in there. The wiring harness is in there. And for the first time since I've owned this car, I also have a door latch on the outside. Just a quick update on the cable ties inside this door. As you remember, I had two types coming out of the door. One was this style. That is the style that you mostly use on the body for harnesses. And the other one was this style, uh, which is this like open-ended thing that you can pop a, a wiring harness into. It just so happens that my friend at Inline 4 is currently stripping a 944S2 Cabrio. So I could go have a look at his doors. And this was the only one that was used inside those doors. And this is also where some of these come from. Why this car had this kind of style in there, I don't know. Maybe they just ran out of stock in the factory while they were assembling. But uh, this seems to be what should be in there. And this is what I've been putting back. All right, so now that I have the car on all four its wheels again, I can try and see if this door will close. Oh, it latches really nicely, actually. I actually think this one is not bad. I might want to pull it in a little bit. But this door is actually fine. I don't think I need an adjustment here. This is perfect. All right, let's move on to the other side. I've actually already loosened this bracket and uh, just pu pulled it up a little bit higher because it wasn't catching at all. And now we are catching, as you can see. That's the first catch and that's the second one. But I am getting a little bit of movement on the door here. So I think I wanna push this catch a little bit to the back if I can, and then see if I can pull the door tighter. All right, I've got this catch as far back as it can possibly go now, and uh, it seems to be closing a lot better. As you can see, there's no more movement in this door. This is now nice and tightly shut. All right, so with the doors aligned, um, I've now got the car back on the quick check so that I have the door at a nicer working height for me. So what I want to do now is I just want to install the quartz vent with all of its bolts and brackets, and then I'll put in the window runner on this side. And once that is loosely fitted, I should be able to bring in the glass that sits here as well. And once that is done, we can start looking at bringing in more stuff.
All right, so I've got this quarter vent window loosely attached to the car. It can still move. It's not it's not tight in any way. And I started bringing in the uh, window guide on this side as well. And you saw me taking this guy out. The reason for that is there's a bit of a sequencing challenge that I was dealing with. The window guide needs to sit in front of this arm so this sits behind the window guide and that's why i took it off so once i have this window guide attached to the car properly i'll put the lock button back in i'm not foreseeing any issues in that area it should be fine so let's continue Right, so this door is now 90% complete. I've got the glass in, I've got the regulator in, I've got the motor in. This was really, really, really tough to do. I think I spent about five hours just getting this piece done. It's a massive puzzle. It's super fiddly. And I think I have a way that works. So let me show you that on the other door. So as you can see, I've been busy on this one as well. So let me show you what the status of the door is. And hopefully you can mimic this when you have to do your cabrio door. So these guys are in there but they are extremely loose there is no nut inside here and you can see i've even pushed this arm away from its adjustment slot and if we look inside here you can see i've pushed this rail all the way back to give me more space to wiggle this, this window from side to side because you need this movement in the window in order to catch the wheels on the runner and if you look down there you can see this is the back runner that's in and there way at the front, you can see the front runner is in. So how I did this is this was actually not attached yet. So this was still loose. All three wheels on the regulator needs to be free to move. And then what I did is I took this window and I literally brought it in like this and caught the front of the window on the back runner and then slid it all the way through. Once that was on, I put, took this window, moved it as far back as I possibly could and also tilted it back up again. And that allowed me just enough free space to hook that little wheel onto it. That seems to be the way that works because five hours of fighting and doing something else on that side did not work. This has taken me about 40 minutes. So I think this is the way to do it. Unfortunately, I can't film and show you guys what I've done because it's impossible to get the camera in there. But I hope this helps you in assembling your doors. And please be aware, this is a cabriolet specific thing. If you are building a coupe, it's a thousand times easier. This is difficult because everything moves, everything's adjustable, and it's just a tough, tough, tough job. Anyway, I'm going to get this guy buttoned up, and then we can start doing the adjustments. So now that I have both the doors completely installed with all of its glass and the roof up and latched, it's time for me to check the alignment. Um, this door seems to be fine. You can see as we close it, this, this window, ignore the rubber for now, but this window sits nicely inside this rubber all the way. You can see that, 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 that that's the kind of shot we want. And if I close the door completely, we can see all the rubbers are nicely tight all around. This is still open, obviously, because the motor is not working. But I can see down here, if we look there, the lines are good. And as this window comes up, it moves out a little bit more. So this will absolutely fill this hole. So I'm happy with this side. The passenger side's okay. So let's have a look on the driver's side. Let's see what we get here. 
already feeling resistance. If we look down here, you can see this glass. Look at that, it's too far forward. All right, so that means I have to move this glass back. So the quarter vent and this rear glass has to go back into the door. So let's get that adjusted and then we'll retry this uh, door. All right, so to move the glass back, I need to loosen it up here. And here. And here. And here. And here. And here. All right, let's see if we can get this guy to move. Let's go there. Okay. This is it. Oh, that's not too bad. Right. We need to be a little bit more forward on this one, like there. Let's try this. I'll tighten it up. This one I want to lift up just a little bit. Just angle it up like that. Somewhere like that. Let's try this. That is more what I'm looking for. All right. I think this will actually close. That closes. But you can see it pinches the rubber a little bit, so I think I need to move back just a smidge more. Just want to loosen it up a bit. Let's try this. Perfect, that's it. I'm going to tighten this up. All right, so after a lot of fiddling, I'm now happy with the way it shuts. It's still not great on this little corner, but I see that the rubber has been pulled down. So it's most likely a rubber problem and not a door problem. But let me show you where we are at. If you look here, the glass is nicely tucked into the rubber all the way up to here, where it just bites the rubber. And you can see it's pulling it away from the window. So I think this is just something I have to fix over here, which I will do. But that means we are, for now, at least done with these doors because the rest of the work needs to be done using electrics. And since this car is not currently powered up and I'm not going to power it up with all of the open wires on the floor, this is as far as I'm going to get. And that also unfortunately means for all of you guys who's been signing in for the 968, that this is where the work on the 968 is going to stop for a couple of episodes because the Safari is begging me to work on it. There's a lot that needs to happen on there. I want to get this car road worthy. I want to be able to drive it in the springtime. So I'm going to focus my attention away from the 968 onto the 924 Safari. So in the next episode, we'll start building up the Safari. I promise you that's an epic little car. It's going to be really, really cool. So until next time, guys, goodbye.